Today I'm standing in East Los Angeles with my friend Felice Stella. Hi everyone! In her backyard garden and Felice is a master chef and she is going to make nasturtium pesto and we are going to eat it. So stay tuned. Let me show you around my backyard garden. Follow me. This is my first house and this is my first big small garden. So I can't believe my husband and I, we think every day how lucky we are. My husband and I and our brood of cats have been here since March of 2013. So six wow. years now. So I want to plant more fruit trees and you know, avocados, uh, pomegranates. It's not a tiny yard, but it's not a huge yard either. So I have to be smart about what I plant. Obviously the lemon tree was here before you got here. It, yes it was. It was almost dead. This entire property was swimming in weeds, uh, about four feet tall. We had to go to Home Depot and get a weed whacker and weed whack for months. And then after that, wait for a, a substantial rain to come since we have clay soil, which is very difficult to work with and wait for the water to really saturate the soil so we can start pulling all the weeds. I love cooking. Food saved my life, literally. I had cancer when I was 25 years old and uh, I had a paradigm shift. I had to change the way I think about food and where it comes from and what chemicals are in it or on it. So that's when I started cooking, uh, making really clean food, lots of greens. Uh, I, I've had a little tiny balcony garden as long as I can remember because I've been living in apartments for, for decades. I started by, you know, going to farmers markets and, and buying clean organic produce and then finding it in supermarkets. Um, and then supplementing with some things that I could grow on a balcony. I have so much nasturtium now. I give it away to friends and, and neighbors. It started with a packet this big of seeds and now it's everywhere. Right. Nasturtium is incredibly nutritious. It's full of vitamin C. The leaves and the flowers? The leaves and the flowers and you can even eat the stems. And the seeds, when they're green, they can be turned into capers. They can be used as capers and pickled. Patsy lived here when we moved here. And his previous owners, they just kicked him out and they wanted to take him to the pound. And we said, are you kidding me? We're gonna take care of him. He protects himself and he protects us from squirrels and from mice and you know other rodents. I am writing a cookbook. And I've never written a book before, but yes, it's an autobiographical cookbook about me growing up in the Soviet Union and specifically in Soviet Moldova. And, um, you know, growing up and eating there and the cuisine of Moldova, it's, it's very unique because it's influenced by many different cultures. This was occupied by the Ottoman Empire at one point and then Hungary and Germany and all these different cultures. Are, are a part of Moldova and Moldovan cuisine. So it's gonna be about me growing up there, eating and my family cooking and where the love came from. You know, when we moved here, our, our next door neighbor, he had an uh, apricot tree and we started talking about gardening and I, you know, the first lemon harvest that we had, I gave him a bunch of lemons and he gave me some of some of his apricots and these neighbors they moved in and they planted a bunch of stuff so we're constantly exchanging um, our produce and one of my neighbors Katya she she and I uh, started uh, an exchange uh, produce exchange uh, kind of tradition here we all go to the park with our neighbors and we we bring cuttings and seeds and fruits and whatever we can offer to each other and we just exchange 
one day you go into your backyard and you see a weird plant that you've never seen before and of course you that's what we do we live dangerously backyard gardeners you put it in your mouth and you chew on it and if you're not dead in five minutes it's great and it tasted just like french sorrel which i'm growing over there the wild one is more lance shaped some of our biggest problems insect wise are mealybugs earwigs aphids of course what can you do about earwigs oh. diatomaceous earth is one thing you just sprinkle it on everything and everything looks like it just snowed a lot of the pests we've been taken care of with beneficial nematodes they're microorganisms they they come in a packet they look like a you know creamy powder and you mix them with water and you water your entire garden with with them and at night they don't like the sun and they take care of cockroaches and ants and uh, termites and grubs and leaf hoppers and pretty much anything you can think of any pest they will infest the larva in the ground and then they start reproducing and, and feeding on the larva and then the larva dies this is citronella this is what it looks like it's in the geranium family it's great for keeping mosquitoes away and if you rub the leaves and oh my god i wish you could smell this it's so good you take it from the mother plant and uh stick it directly in the ground okay and it will root wow. just make sure you water it and it's that simple and this looks like dandelion this is just i would consider this a weed but do you eat these i absolutely eat them when when they come up i add them to the green borscht they're incredibly nutritious we started with two colors we had yellow nasturtium and we had red nasturtium basically the bees pollinate them and all these variegations start so you take the leaves off you can leave a little bit of a stem in stems are edible and you make a little cold water bath the good thing about nasturtium is they don't hold water so it will roll off of them but the most wonderful thing about pesto is that it's a raw product so you have all these amazing nutrients the vitamins and the minerals all fresh and you know if you flash freeze them they will last a long time flash freezing is is freezing something really quickly under very very cold temperatures okay so you throw it in the freezer in other words you throw it in the freezer <laughs> they're pine nuts I mean, <laughs> it's the most divine flavor and and then we have walnuts and almonds for texture and for protein and for the omega-3s and now the garlic and now the garlic it's when you're angry at someone yeah. smash some garlic is the most gratifying thing because you take a heavy knife and just whack it oh it feels so good and then bam it's the easiest way to peel garlic so whack and release this pesto by the way is a really good thing to eat when you have a cold nasturtiums have um, antibacterial properties it came from south america and people used to eat it when they had colds actually for for urinary tract infections for all sorts of in, in, infections it's it's a great antibacterial and combined with garlic it's like the best thing to eat when you are under the weather we're going to process the garlic and the nuts the harder things before we add the leaves give it a few pulses okay 
I picked this basil earlier before it got really hot in the backyard and it all got wilty and sad. So still we'll, good. We'll put this in. This is still nice and fresh. Mm, it smells wonderful. And this pesto adds basil for, for that special basil flavor, but um, you definitely will taste the, the peppery, grassy flavor of the nasturtium. And it's really delicious. Yeah, so I put about three, four little bunches of basil. In, in England in the 1600s, they used to call nasturtium Indian cress because nasturtium, that, that peppery, grassy kind of flavor of it uh, is similar to watercress. And um, they called it Indian because it comes from South America. And of course, you know, mm, they, got they, thought, they thought they went to India as, as we recall. So. so we're just gonna shove it all in there. Wow. And you'll see all of a sudden, like right now it's packed and all of a sudden it will shrink to like that much. We're gonna use extra virgin olive oil because it makes everything better, just like garlic. And we're gonna drizzle it in as we go. And don't be stingy with it. Can you believe this color? I mean, look mm. at this color. Wow. That's <laughs> Insane. And the smell, once again, I wish you, could, <gasps> you guys could smell this. It's Ooh. like divine. So now we're going to add some Parmigiano Reggiano and Romano cheese. And again, don't be stingy. We'll start with about a third. And then we'll see. Okay. And more olive oil. It will stay this green if you just serve it fresh right now, which we're gonna do shortly with some really good homemade gnocchi. Uh, it's gonna be this vibrant green. Wow. It gets darker in the freezer. Would you like to taste? Mm. things hit you at a different yeah the pine nuts the garlic the nasturtium the peppery the nasturtium the basil it's all it it doesn't just it's not melded i mean it's melded the flavors are melded but it you can you can taste them individually my mom used to call them lazy dumplings they're little dumplings that you make with just flour egg and cooked potato which you great and you make that dough and you pinch off these little dumplings and you throw them in boiling water and they're done in two minutes. She makes it sound so simple, but that sounds like a lot of work to me. <laughs> it is a lot of, it's a lot of work. It's time consuming to make the, the and actual little the potatoes. And and grating the potatoes, you, you have to have a final kind of like angel hair consistency to the potato. And if you would like to see another video where she shows you this technique, we could do that. Just let us know in the comments below, right? Yep, okay. absolutely. Yeah. I am putting our new yummy delicious pesto into an ice cube tray. It's the best way to store it in the freezer. And then each time you want to make some pasta or anything you want to put pesto on, you just pull it out of the freezer and you pop it out. And it's super easy. Oh, let me show you. I already have it frozen here, and I've been taking them out. These are cute little containers. I've never seen those. Yeah, they're silicone, so they're really easy to use. So this is this is how it comes out. And then you have to thaw it, obviously. Yeah, thaw it out. Just let it thaw out. Just sit it out on the counter and uh -huh. let it thaw out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're going to get our yummy pesto. So obviously... Um, you put a bunch in a jar for me to take home, and that's why we have not as much left. Yes, <laughs> yes. that didn't mysteriously but, shrink. But this is plenty. This is this. There's uh, three servings in here 
of gnocchi. When no one is watching at the end, I just stick my finger in the food processor and I just lick everything <laughs> off of it. But that's another show. Oh, it smells so good. Wow, look at this. Yes, <laughs> yummy. I'm so excited. And I'm gonna try this flower that we were looking at earlier and it eat it. Mmm, 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 that is so good. They're delicious. Mmm, wow. Do you eat the whole thing? Do you eat yeah, the Yeah, you can eat the whole thing. And, and the stem, and the stem. And the stem. Mmm. It gets very peppery. Mm -hmm. The outer leaves are not peppery, but boy, the inside has a bite. A yes, real it bite. does. Okay, well, let's drink a toast to my friend Felice for the wonderful afternoon of her cooking and sharing her garden with us. Thank you. Cheers. You're most welcome. Mm. Taste it. Mm. Now we're going to taste the pesto. Well, I already tasted it in the kitchen. It was incredible. The hat. Mm. I guess it's good. It means oh, it's good. That's so good. Incredible. I really took a bite. You didn't take a bite. <laughs> that's his Dora. <laughs> she said she was going to spy on us. Oh, she her. didn't. So. I don't know if she would have been able to. Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking the videos. Be sure and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Join me on other social media sites like Facebook and Instagram at Late Bloomer Show, and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.